Go for it. <laughs> Welcome to Security Weekly. This week, we're going to interview Adrian DeVopre. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but it's going to be an awesome interview. So make sure you stay tuned for that. After that, we're going to talk about security news for this week. Lots of awesome stories to kick off 2016. So stay tuned. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island. The show where exploits run wild. Packets aren't the only things getting sniffed. Systems aren't the only things getting penetrated. Functions are the only things getting wrapped. And bits aren't the only things getting bagged. And those cocktails, they're thirsty. It's Paul's Security Weekly. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. NetSparker, the developers of the only false positive free web application security scanners, enabling you to automatically identify vulnerabilities and security flaws in all of your websites, web applications, and web services. NetSparker scanners are available in two editions, NetSparker Desktop and NetSparker Cloud, the enterprise online scanning service. For more information, visit their website at netsparker.com forward slash security weekly. Looking for a career change? Tenable Network Security is hiring. Everything from programmers to researchers. Check out all of the available positions at securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs. The SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit sans.org to explore the full curriculum and latest training offerings. And here's your host. He's a man who has no idea what he's going to say, eh? Paul Asadorian. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Security Weekly. This is episode 446, even, for January, I don't even know what Seventh. date it is, January Seventh. 7th, 2016. It's always, you know, when the first show of the year, it's a little rocky start. There was yeah. noticeably no music in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well you post-production. <know>. <laughs> there you <laughs> Thanks, go. Steve. <laughs> Larry, <laughs> welcome to the show. He's with me yes. in studio, Mr. Larry Pesci. Yes. There's a hair on my laptop. That's wonderful. And I'm that's so happy for you. And that's not uh, yours is either. It, it's way it, too long. Is, is it, it cur curly? Is it curly? Because that might be mine. Oh. And yeah. it's underwear model John Strand on the lines hey. as well. <laughs> How's yeah, it going, just, John? It's, just, it's, it's been a busy week teabagging Larry's notebook computer. Yeah. I know. It is. It is. <laughs> Glad to see <laughs> that we're all still in, in the Security Weekly spirit kicking off the year. Mr. Joff Thayer is on the line. Via Skype, welcome, Joff. G'day, Paul and crew. And you know, I work for that guy. Uh, it's just a joy to be here. Happy New Year, everybody. Yes. Uh, I do have a couple of announcements. Um, you may have seen this if you subscribe to our mailing list. Um, that's uh, securityweekly.com forward slash insider. And we made a couple of announcements. There's a Pony Express survey that you can fill out. It takes mm -hmm. five minutes. You qualify to win a free Pone Plug R3 <laughs> And a full year subscription to Pwn Pulse. Pwn Pulse, yes. And then I also announced that the Hack Naked uh, gear, we're going to have lots of Hack Naked gear <laughs> available. Uh, our shop is no longer online, as we, we said at mm -hmm. the end of last year. Yep. Um, but we are taking submissions. So if you'd yep. like to uh, send us some artwork that we could put on a T-shirt or a sweatshirt or whatever, you can send those to PSW at securityweekly.com. We'll be taking submissions up till March 1st. And we'll uh, pick some of the submissions, and we'll use them to print on uh, sure fabulous stuff. Cr credit where credit is due. And we will give you said fabulous stuff. You'll get receive a whole bunch of hack naked gear as well as a mention on the show. So nice. And, and, and maybe any other things that we can come up with. So I'm also very excited. Uh, is that what that smell is? Yes. Oh. I'm very excited <laughs> to announce our Android app. So we've got, uh, I've got my Android tablet here. So now we have. That's uh, not a tablet. That's a phone. <laughs> it actually could be <laughs> a phone. Hello. Um, so we do have a, a, two Android apps for Security Weekly, one with the videos, one with the audio. Uh, you can install those from the Google Play Store. And I was messing around with this earlier. It came out pretty good. Um, it's really just, you know, all about our content. So if, you know, you don't mm -hmm. like your podcast catcher um, or mm -hmm. you forgot to update your podcast catcher or whatever, you can go into our app uh, and get all of our fabulous content. Nice. So. Nice. Now, does it require access to the microphone and all that stuff? It, I <laughs> noticed. Um, so this app is actually done for us uh, by Libsyn. Nice. Um, and it does require your location and 
Oh. It wants ac access to put things in your audio uh -huh. in yeah, video. Yeah, to, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, the location I thought was weird. I'm going to ask them about that. Like, why oh, does it need? Yeah, I don't. I don't care where you are. This. I mean, when you download it, I it records where you're downloading it from. That may not be where you are, mm -hmm. right? So I don't really care about yeah. where they, you are. They probably have, Libsyn you. probably has something that they want to know that demographic. But right. we could give two rats asses about it. That's right. So yeah, Android app. Which is uh, awesome. So if you have an Android device, I have several tablets. My phone is iPhone, but I, I have several tablets. Yeah, we have. Uh, Do you have any also. tablets that like pop up in your house and you're like, where, th where the hell did this come from? Yes. Is this one of ours? I don't remember. But it's got like a <laughs> hack naked sticker on it. So you're like, well, it must be mine. I guess. <laughs> I, I have Raspberry yeah. Pis that show up like that. Like, yeah, where the fuck did that, that come from? What is that supposed <laughs> to be doing? Why, why does it have legs? Jesus yeah. Christ. So yeah, that um, happens around my house too. Adrian de Beaupre is here with us, uh, who I'm told is a wealth of knowledge on pen testing in general and web application pen testing. He also has an extensive martial arts skills, lives in the country bordering the USA to the north. Oh. Is that, is that America's, Mexico? America's oh. Build a wall. Build a wall now. America's build a wall. <laughs> you actually should, should build it now. Keep you out. <laughs> And you uh, you're also, Adrian, the organizer of B-Sides Ottawa. Yes. A and uh, I might add, an instructor with the Sands Institute. It, yes, which is why there's a lot of camaraderie between Larry yeah, and John and Adrian, who have spent much time together Sands the instructing. Those guys? Yeah. Naked, <laughs> jumping up and down. Yeah, I, I, no, that's I remember whenever right. I got the request to write a letter of recommendation for Adrian becoming a Sands instructor, and I just responded back like, ah, oh, crap. Not no, he's yeah. going to be around forever. <laughs> Because <laughs> like Very all rough. of my embarrassing stories that I have at Sands, Adrian's actually been there. He's kind of like my bad luck charm in that regard. <laughs> so like whenever you get set on fire, fire. John, yeah, he's yeah. there. Yeah, he, he's he was there for the first time or two times. He was there a couple of times where he got really inebriated and uh, and did bad things in Orlando. Yeah, he's been around. Instigator. Yeah. Disney Instigator. will never be the same. Absolutely. And, he's, and it, this is the part where he's like, I don't remember that. That's because you were really Oh, drunk. no, I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there Unfortunately. Okay, as long as we got it down. So. Instigator, enabler, you know, it's all the same. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Semantic. Yep. So, uh, Adrian, uh, I had in my notes, which I can't find, I remember seeing something about uh, you talking about HTTP2. But wait, wait, we have a question to ask him first. We do? Oh, no. The oh. question. How did you, how oh, did no. You Adrian, you've been on the show before. Yes. This is just his second uh, time. Oh, okay. So, we're we Adrian, at the end, this. actually, we're going to ask you. Virgin. We're going to ask you the, the not virgin five questions. So, we have a, a new set of five questions. He's been here before. That right. He's cheating. That's right. So we have new five questions, so don't let me forget that at the end. But now, Adrian, so what is this HTTP2 business? You know, it's really weird. It's, it's one of those things that, okay, well, of course, it's been ratified. It's an official standard, and people use it. Then if you think about that, well, if people are using it, what are they using it for? And uh, who tested that to make sure that it didn't, doesn't introduce new vulnerabilities, new security issues? Um, so is HTTP2 the, is, the, the new, uh, like an, an improved upon HTTP standard or an offshoot from HTTP to do different things? No, now, uh, so it's an upgrade to okay. HTTP 1.1. So if you talk HTTP 1.1 to a server that can talk HTTP 2, you can send the, the little header that says, hey, you know, do you want to upgrade to 2? And the server says, sure, let's switch to 2. And they do. So... You can talk HTTP 2.0 to servers right now. It's not like just Speedy. It's it's based on Speedy, which was the uh, the Google protocol. But your browser can talk it right now, and your servers can talk it right now. Not all of them, but some of them. And and the question is, okay, so so now what? Who looked at that stuff to make sure it doesn't do anything weird? Yeah, <laughs> kind of like it, well, it reminds me. It's very similar to the IPv6, right? Right. Uh, we're you know, not really using it, but you know. Everyone can talk it now, so yeah. when, what are the implications? So my Apple TV mm -hmm. in my house tries to talk V6 out, and it's not allowed. <laughs> is that is that just like the Canadian version of Apple TV? Or is no, it I think it's Apple TV. You're grounded, bad TV. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go out. <laughs> no video for you when you're... No, that's so this, this HP2 stuff is, is, is everywhere, and it's one of those things that, okay, well, not only 
is it probably going to be problematic? But okay, now I'm a pen tester. I like taking pens and putting them in really, really, really strange places. Whoa. Ew. Ew. Whoa. Uh, oh, I'll, 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 I'll vouch right. for him on that, actually. <laughs> oh, <fuck>. That's <laughs> the John, test. John speaking test, from experience. You test the pen. Right? So you're testing pens. That's not always that testing. You're test, oh. Testing pens finds all of John's holes? What? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, that's, a, that's the same yeah. sound John was making. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, Larry, Larry, you and John and I have spent some quality time together on mm -hmm. the road in hotels. Yes. So, so yeah, we don't want to hear about those. Well, maybe no, we don't want to hear about no, those. No. Put that aside. Yeah. So, so, Adrian, you know, have, you looked, have you started looking at the Have you started looking at the security of HTTP2? A little bit. So, you know, it kind of caught me by surprise. Like, okay, so Adrian, you want to talk about something on, you know, Security Weekly tonight? I'm like, uh, no, but okay, I'll pick some stuff up. And like most science instructors, of course, I made some PowerPoint slides. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, let's let's do a live demo, right? Because uh, I, I found a virgin goat this afternoon and sacrificed her to the uh, demo gods. So, you know, of course we do live demo, because why not? Excellent. So, so you're going to like share your screen and give us a demo? I, I love to share. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> this will end poorly. <laughs> Everybody strap in. <laughs> I don't understand what you mean. Strapping on. <laughs> oh, John, there you go. Ha! I knew that. No, no, I'm joking. Uh, uh, yeah, so just a, a note. When Adrian shares his screen, we're going to remove the lower third uh, from that so we can see Adrian's screen in all its glory. Okay, why is Skype barfing on me and saying checking subscription? Can that... <laughs> Clearly, oh, you're not. I think it wants to talk IPv6 going outbound. <laughs> oh, this would be bad. Like, I wanted to share. I want to share. Sharing is caring. Okay. Share screens. Start. Oh, I see a spinny thing. Huh? Oh, I see a car. Oh, yeah. That's my car. So, you know, I, I can't live with the PowerPoint slides. So here you go. Um, my name is Adrian DeBopre, and I'm an internet storm, pen, storm center handler. I'm a tester of pens. I'm a certified sense instructor, and I work in beautiful Ottawa, Canada. Enough about me. So HTTP2, what is it? Why should we care? And as a pen tester, why is that interesting? It's one of those things, you know, of course, it's it's like super fast and super secure, right? And, and you know, there couldn't possibly be any pro problems with it. The, the implementation must be perfect. And there must be all kinds of tools I can use to, to test HP2. And, you know, if I wanted to pen test it, what could I use? And just because, you know, I can, I'll do a demo. So it's much more fast and much more secure. And it's this binary, bidirectional protocol and... and, and, and it's secure because it's encrypted, right? Because, you know, TLS encryption solves every security problem. I know that because some of my vendors who sell me the certificates that I install my servers tell me that, you know, once I've installed a certificate, that server is now secure. And no, nothing possibly could go wrong with that. So here's one of the freaky things about it. The server can just give you data that you never asked for. Wait, what? I'm thinking to myself, yeah, it, what? It can just, just give you data. And I'm like, well, is that like cross server request forgery? No, it's it's a feature. It's a feature of the protocol that the server can just decide to give you stuff. And and because it's bidirectional now over a single TCP socket, it can give you whatever it wants. And and you're the browser or you're the client, so you you have to process it. So if the server's, you know, evil, nothing could possibly go wrong with that, right? No, of course not. So it's 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 much faster. It's much more secure. It's it's everywhere. Right now, you can talk HTTP two to Google, and and other servers out there. So, since Google is not evil, nothing could possibly go wrong with that either. So it's much it's it's much faster. It's much more secure, and it's it's very well researched, right? Because we've already implemented it. But honestly, just you know, Googling <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. for for a, a few minutes. Um, you know, 20 minutes ago, I, I didn't really find a whole lot of research on 
what it means to be HTTP2. Uh, so I'm going to say it's probably an enormous attack vector. It's got probably tons of unknown vulnerabilities because we just implemented it in 2014 and, you know, wait, no, 2015, whatever year it is, 2016, right? So it's just the tip of the iceberg. As it gains popularity, more people using it, it's going to gain more attention. It's going to gain more attention for people looking to use it because it's probably an attack vector that we don't know about. And, you know, honestly, if it's everywhere, you can have NGHTP as a server, Nginx, H2O, Apache, although most of the default installs of any of the protocols and servers that you're running will not by default be HTTP2, which is probably okay. But, okay, so there's some proxies, there's some libraries. Most browsers can talk it. Again, using your earlier analogy, it's like IPv6 in that it's already freaking everywhere, but no one's paying any attention to it. So if no one's paying any attention to it, there must be something really cool in there, right? Yeah, usually well, that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So, right. So it's a new area of research. Web apps are already talking it. So I can probably attack the web apps over HTTP2. And what if the people who installed it don't really pay attention to it? So let's look at it this way. If our proxies, our, our firewalls, our, our fancy doodads that we paid gajillions of dollars for to protect our environment, what if they don't understand HTTP2? So is it possible this protocol completely blows past a lot of the existing protective mechanisms? So we can attack servers over HTTP2. We can attack clients over HTTP2. In fact, there have been issues with parsers and filtering stacks that they either don't understand HTTP2 or there have been issues with it. For example, there's a WebSocket um, issue in Wireshark. The parser itself was broken and you know, had to be rebuilt and rewritten for WebSocket and for HTTP2 because it just didn't understand it correctly. So we're just seeing, I think, the tip of the iceberg as to what we could possibly do with this protocol. But the problem is there are vulnerabilities already in it. So just quick look at the CVE, Firefox, Firefox, H2O, Director Traversal, um, some somewhat released but probably never going to be fixed issues with some stuff called Node, Apache Traffic Server. Apache traffic server. What's that? Oh, that's a proxy. Isn't that interesting? So a bunch of guys from Yahoo decided to take a fuzzer and fuzz the daylights out of, you guessed it, Firefox and Apache traffic server, and they found previously unknown vulnerabilities. <laughs> One of them's got a CVE. Although if you check that CVE, it says it's been assigned, but there's no data. But if you check the Yahoo site where the guys talk about the research, they say, yeah, here's the, here's the, here's the issue. Here's the vulnerability. So it's patched in Apache traffic server. But Node-HTTP2 apparently is an abandoned project. So if you're using it, you're out of luck. And Firefox, Firefox. So it seems like we're picking on Firefox here. Firefox and Apache, are those the only possible things out there that have vulnerabilities related to HTTP2? My guess um, is no. Yeah, I, I really don't think so. And in fact, the guys from, from Yahoo who wrote the HTTP2 fuzzer only picked on Firefox and Apache. So... The other stuff, I'm going to guess once we start fuzzing these things, we're going to find all kinds of goodies. And the tools, the tools are not there. Um, MITM Proxy is in development. They're talking about HTTP2. They just really announced it this year. Sorry, in 2015. You know, it's oh, th this year, last year. Um, so enough. I tried to... Close enough. <laughs> you know, well, close is good in, in, in close enough is good in what? Hand grenades. Um, or shoes and nuclear or shoes, weapons. Or shoes. Nuclear weapons. Hand yeah, and, and, and government work. Right. <laughs> right? This, Print pff, maybe in Canada. I mean. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Oh, uh, I don't think. I, we got to give that one to him. That's I've, pretty, I've done, uni pretty universal. Good, yeah, good point. Good point. I've done some cross-border work. Although <laughs> there is, a, there is a, a company in Canada, CGI, who built that wonderful Obamacare site for you. Oh yeah, Thank, I remember that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for that. Thanks. What a gift. So what a gift. we have we have uh, three clients. We have NGHDB2. We have Curl. We have Python Hyper. Um, they can talk HTTP2. They're actually fairly interesting to install because if you just install them, you know, in Kali or Ubuntu, you can't just say you know apt get, you know, because apt is the thing you want inside your computer. But <laughs> when you when you apt get, you you don't get the one that can do HTTP2. You have to build it 
by hand. It's like going old school. You have to like, you know, tar, ZXVF, CD space, uh, dot slash configure, make, pseudo make install. Oh, it didn't work. Update the library by hand. And it's no, really it always works the first time, Adrian. What do you, you know, maybe it's because I'm just that bad at this shit because it doesn't work for me. <laughs> um, so, you know, and then I had to install this 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 Go thing to get HTTP2 fuzz to work. It's like, holy cow, you know, isn't Linux to the point where I can just, you know, do apt-get or, or, or yum, I love yum, and, and everything just installs. Well, it doesn't work. In fact, Kali 2.0, the newest version of Kali, has none of these tools installed. They don't do HTTP2. So if the tools are not there to even talk HTTP2, and they're, they're fairly, you know, I'm not going to give myself a pat on the back, but it took me like a couple hours to get all this stuff installed. So, where are the commercial tools? Dum, dum, dum. So, just for fun, I have a Nike Linux license, and I asked them, you know, sent them an email uh, before Christmas, and they got back to me in the new year saying, you know, when are you going to support WebSockets and HTTP2? And the answer was, uh, from first level, we don't know. From second level, uh, we're not sure. And when I actually talked to the developer at some point, they said, well, yeah, about that. <laughs> oh no so you know quickly i asked a couple of friends so let's talk about you know ibm let's talk about hp let's talk about netsparker let's talk about um the other tools out there when are they going to support hp2 dum 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 it, so dot, I mean, dot, for, dot. for these tools adrian that's almost like a complete rewrite right i mean it's a totally new protocol well, they have to rewrite their entire network stack. Yeah. 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 Which, dum, dum, dum. Burp has basically said, yeah, we're going to th think about that. Mm -hmm. So WASZAP, I was talking to the WASZAP developers on the list and I said, okay, yep. well, when are we going to support this? And they said, well, we're going to rewrite the entire stack. We're doing it anyway because some, some of the stuff in there is from Pyros and it's gone and it's dead, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So Zap will probably be, again, one of the first tools to adopt HP2. They were one of the first tools to adopt WebSocket. So I will be able to eventually proxy through Zap, which means Zap, being application-aware, will be able to attack that application at mm -hmm. some point. I'm going to say possibly this year, maybe next year. Oh, hmm. Interesting. So I only have one tool that appear to have it on their developer roadmap for this year or next year at all. I couldn't find any others. Interesting. So how do we pen test this stuff? Well, normally I look at a web app and I say, okay, I'm going to you know, use a proxy and a scanner, except we don't have any of those yet. Yeah, because you can't, so there's no way to proxy because the proxy has to understand HTTP2. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, none yeah, of them in, in, in a lot of ways, it's worse than, uh, you know, we, we made the IPv6 analogy, but it's, it's well, worse. It's worse, than right. Uh, because you you know you're up the app you're up the stack and and the the diversity there just gets just just so much broader so yeah this is this is interesting mm. <laughs> anyway continue well, on Adrian. Th this this is freaking amazing this is fun like this is old school you have to actually analyze the protocol you have to actually fuzz the clients the servers the libraries you actually have to attack the applications with a tool you have to build. And at some point, of course, commercial tools will catch up. The tools will get there. But this is really cool. This is like 1995 all oh, over again. It, it's exciting. It, it is. It's, <laughs> can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> Come yeah. on. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, I, I've only been looking at this for, for basically a couple of weeks. Um, as an aside, I'll be helping out uh, with the course called Security 642, the advanced web app pen test course with my good friend, Justin Searle. And we've been talking about, well, we need a HTTP2 section in that course. And what are we going to talk about? Well, hmm. this is this is what we're going to start talking about because, you know, we have a problem and we need to be able to talk to this stuff. So hopefully this will work. I'm going to try switching to a VM. How's that? Do we see VM? I do. It's really small, though. Can you make it bigger? It's awesome. That's what she said. She says that to him all the time. <laughs> Uh, yes, of course you said that. To Paul. Oh, now you're just being mean. Sometimes the truth hurts. But not uh, Paul's. Uh, it never hurts. It's not big enough. I was, <laughs> <laughs> so I was waiting until uh, someone said that. 
I've reinstalled curl, curl746, and notice right here, it supports HTTP2. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. Fancy tools. <laughs> so your curl doesn't do that. This is like downloading curl, tar, zxvf, dot slash configure, blah, blah, blah. Oh, let me see library, going back, installing GHTP2, installed by hand, and uh, anyway. Going down, yeah, yeah dependency, dependency, dependency hell. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Have a Even root though, canal while you're doing it, and then because you <laughs> can't just do sudo at apt get because uh, yeah, have, that have, work. have a beer, walk away, have some dinner, come back. It's but error. It's broken. Yeah. Go compile something else to fix that this, error. This is just like been, we've all been, we've all been there. I do remember doing this in Solaris when I was a Solaris admin. And this that is why is Linux not is fun. not ready for Dude, desktop. Dude, not fun. Dude, you're a rookie. Come on, SunOS, man. SunOS, beef. I, I or, before they the, called it Solaris. I, I did have some of those systems. They were like older ones that I had to uh, basically upgrade to Solaris. Well, I was compiling shit on VMS, too, so. <laughs> 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 we had some interest in it. Uh, sorry, we're derailing. Go ahead, Adrian. All right. So I should be able to talk HP2 to this server sitting on my other box and go, boom. Hey. Hello, world. Isn't that awesome? And I can tell I was talking HTTP2 because yeah, HTTP2 right there. I did I did the switching protocols. It even says HTTP2. And it right says there. Using, I'm using HTTP2. But do you notice what I typed in there? You typed HTTP. HTTP, right? Yeah, this is plain text. I didn't go HTTPS. You don't have to. Interesting. Only this the, if the server supports it. You can do that, but of course, this is self-signed, so I can do the same thing. HTTPS. Uh, now, now, what's your you know, server on the other side of that, Adrian? Ah, uh, it's a little Docker H2. It's a little Docker running mm -hmm. H2O, which happens to be vulnerable to. What are you looking at? Ooh, directory traversal! Yay! Yeah, boom. Oh. oh yeah! Everyone clapped. That's a successful demo. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I like it, Adrian. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, it, it pulls it out when it counts. And yeah. When it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> oh. And, and an he's a leak hacker. I can tell. Yeah. Well, you know, I was trying to look for. I was looking for something better, right? Oh, uh, director traversal. But this is what I found in, in the 20 minutes or so I had today to 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 prep for this. But um, it works. It works. You know, because what could be wrong with that? Well. Of course, we could do that, right? Oh, oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I, love I love it. it. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, no. So this little Docker image is uh, running H2O with apparently root privilege or is pointing to a false Etsy shadow um, right. you know, that's been shrouded or, uh, or something else. But anyway, interesting. We call, enough, that, we call right? that Etsy honey shadow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's all I really got for demo. Um, I did actually install Wireshark, got it running with uh, and the other tools I mentioned in um, in the VM. Um, but you know when you when you're hanging around uh, in the interregnum between when it's between Christmas and New Year's, and you're sitting there going, "Well, I could talk to you know people I'm related to, or yeah, I could." Do some development in a VM. <laughs> so, I had, so Adrian, I had relatives from overseas, so I had to actually talk to them. <laughs> so, so, so Adrian, ahead, Adrian you mentioned you know Wireshark. Does mm -hmm. Wireshark understand HTTP two yet? Is oh, there protocol does. dissectors for it? It does. Okay, good. It does. So, um, if you capture the traffic using TCP dump and write it out and import it back into Wireshark, it can dissect the protocol. It's not that great at it. Um, for example, you notice I was running on different ports. I had the Docker image is running on 32768 and 32769. Um, if it's not running on 88443, you have to tell Wireshark, right. hey, right. by the way, this is HP2. Mm -hmm. and, but it actually does dissect it. And um, it's not great. It, it seems fairly rudimentary, but it does work. Mm -hmm. So uh, the testing I've done, I found it's most useful just to do curl v. And shows you the headers like that, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> okay, you understand what's going on. But um, the problem would be, of course, if you're testing over HTTPS, that without a proxy, you're pretty much out of luck, out of luck understanding what's going on in the protocol. Um, 
so so Unless... Adrian, um, quick, quick question. I think I cut you off though. Uh, do you need to finish? I'm sorry. <laughs> so I was going to say, unless of course you have the server private key, but you know. Mm. Oh well, there's a, a hard story you know, altogether. We, we never get that. So, so quick question. You said the uh, you said the server can talk unsolicited back to the client. Uh, is the opposite true? Yes. Well, oh, the client can always <laughs> the client can always initiate contact, right? Because well, the okay, I get some question, but. But outside of protocol exchange, they just unsolicited. Wow, this is a really crazy yeah. protocol. It's it's bi-directional. So, that cool? Adrian, what do we what do we do about it? What what do we do today? Well, I know I'm going to be spending the next you know several years of my life digging into HTTP two because that's just turning me on. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, oh. So <laughs> interesting. What what's get those people off in Canada, huh? Um, but so yeah, do we, uh, all geeks. as, as defenders though, what, what do we do? Do we, can this can be turned off? Uh, I would uh, like if I'm off. installing Apache today, is it by default turning on HTTP two or no? Do you have to compile that? Not to my that? experience. I had to compile it on purpose. Okay. Okay. So it's probably in fact, not in, unless you've purposely put it in there, it's probably not there, but it's in our browsers. It's in all the browsers. Okay. So from now. Going off on a slight tangent, uh, pen testers, of course, realize that, well, if I can't get in through the server, how else am I getting in? Through a client. I'm going client side, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because it works. <laughs> so this this would not be a small problem. Um, people are talking now about, you know, you're, you're shimming, you're monkey in the middle, attacking yourself by decrypting all your HTTPS traffic so you can look in it. But what if it's HTTP2? Well, and I can also see attack vectors that I set up an HTTP2 server and use that in my phishing campaign. And what can I bypass? You know, like you well, said before, a lot of the commercial tools now don't don't support this protocol. So, so all the clients support it. Mm -hmm. Some of the servers can support it. Google does. It's running on Google servers right now. I should mm -hmm. actually have done the demo, but anyway. Um, as defenders, you'd really want to start paying attention mm. because you're probably, it's like IPv6, you know, using that analogy again, it's, you're probably using it. You probably don't know about it. You're probably not controlling it. You're probably not monitoring it. So it's going to bite you. Mm -hmm. It's going to bite you hard in places that you won't like. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, I guess, well, Larry mentioned before we started streaming that, you know, I'm, I'm probably the, the, the less polite Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> You've been very polite so far. Shut so up. So far. <laughs> so Sor far. Sorry. Was there yeah. uh, another... You don't hear me say that much. <laughs> no. No, we don't. He didn't say sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I haven't said A. A. I didn't hear any A's. I, uh, Australians say that, eh? Mm -hmm. But, um, oh, shit. Somebody was going to ask a question. I had another question that was less dumb. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I think you're up, Joff. Oh, I'm up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I noticed this thing called header compression. If in, yeah. yeah, in any of your research between Christmas and New Year's, did you look at that in any depth to see what the heck's going on there? <laughs> well, so the, the header is binary, meaning it's not a text-based header. Like, you know, we're used to seeing the HTTP header as just text. But what they've done is they've made a binary um, protocol where the HTML content and the JavaScript can still be text, where the header is now binary and compressed and most often encrypted, meaning that it's much smaller, much more efficient, a much faster protocol. Um, if it is in clear text, meaning it's not encrypted, Wireshark can dissect the, the, the header and show you all the values, which is good. And at some point, the proxies will get there. But the problem is, of course, if you have encryption, um, unless you have the server key or have enabled your browser to write out the session keys of HTTPS, you have no way of getting in there. So again, you know, we're, we're back to it's got to be clear text or it's got to be proxied to really get into the, to see even what the headers were. Interesting stuff. Uh, does that um, answer your question? What, what's the... Um... What are the primary motivations here uh, of HTTP2 as you did your reading? I mean, I can 
see some fairly intuitive ones, but um, well, but HTTP, HTTP, cool. HTTP is traditionally, you know, it it, it was a, a borked, broken protocol to begin with. You know, they they made it stateless on purpose. They they made it insecure on purpose. Um, they they required the application to add its own security to add, to track its own state. They required uh, that encryption be transport only. That there be no other forms of, you know, the HTTPs have been a borked protocol since 1999. And HTTP 2 is designed to address the performance issues of HTTP, hmm. right? HTTP was unidirectional. You made one request, you got something, you looked at it, you said, oh, by the way, I need the other part of the page. And you download that, and then you download another part, and then download another part. And it was it, it was an asinine protocol. So it, it basically says, okay, well, I can have one socket, one connection, where I can download all the parts of the page, process them, get the rest of the page through the same socket. It's awesome. And yeah, in a lot in a lot of ways, it seems like it's coming back to the the more traditional idea of client server computing and HTTP, which I would agree with, was always well pretty stupid <laughs> in the way it did things. You know, so uh, yeah, they they were probably smoking some kind of weed or whatever. You know, said oh yeah, let's have a a protocol that you know transfers stuff, but just in text, right? Because that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, text and in a very asynchronous manner. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I can see, I can see that uh, from the intuitive perspective. Um, but wow, we've got a lot of work to do here. There's no doubt. Yeah, uh, and you said it correctly, Joff. You know, I, I think it's great to uh, we learned about this, and we can kind of put the call to action out to the security community to say, this is an area that that likely needs some attention. Uh, and if uh, you're into researching things like this, you should uh, do so. Contact Adrian, certainly, mm -hmm. who might Absolutely. be the world's foremost expert on HTTP2 security. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. You so, are um, congratulations. That's right. I think you just earned yeah. that title. You're the first person in this show to present about HTTP2 security. So, oh. so shameless production uh, promotion, I teach for SANS. I'm teaching 504 in February uh, in Alexandria, Virginia, Reston, Virginia, and teaching 642, my favorite course in Austin, Texas in April. It's nice. the Advanced Web Apprentice course. And of course, you can see any instructor schedule by going to sans.org slash instructors. And you can see Larry. Mm -hmm. And you can see John. That's right. Oh, we're all there. Hooray. But anyway, contact, my contact information, which is um, how to get hold of me, um, adrianintrusion.ca. That's my firm here in Ottawa, um, at adriandb on Twitter, and my hashtag for besides Ottawa. So I would really like to know if anyone out there is actually listening. Um, and paying attention, what are you doing with HTTP2 and what tools are you using? Because I would like to know, I didn't find a lot. Like mm -hmm. you saw the list you had there, that's not that's not a big list of, of stuff, no. uh, of tools that I can use, you know, and I wanted to say I'd love to use Hyper. It's a, it's a Python module and, you know, I love Python. I do too. It's not just I, a Canadian I thing. Yes. I, I, I love Python. So, <laughs> well, I mean, um, I love? But the module's totally flaky. It, it doesn't work very well. It's actually mm. a pain to install to get it work correctly. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff, you know, the, the Python community is all about, oh, well, you, you cannot allow users to, to trust certificates that are, that are invalid. You can't allow users. Like, there's this whole flame war going on about, you know, well, you know, Python modules by default should not allow self-signed certs. Yeah, but I kind of need that stuff to do testing of applications that don't have a valid certificate. Yep. Anyway, you know, um, what can I say? So this is, this is fun times. I, I oh, I didn't even whip out the Barbie. What? What? <laughs> is that like a euphemism for something? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Job's familiar with the Barbie, but I mean, the shrimp so, on the Barbie. <laughs> so, yeah, the, yeah. My it's other no, I don't think no. You don't put shrimp on your Barbie. No. She wouldn't like it. Oh, <laughs> she's allergic <laughs> to shellfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my, my other research project these days is uh, after watching Tim Medine present on his friend Kayla. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Oh, his so. His dirty, dirty friend Kayla. Hello, Barbie. Uh-huh. I had to buy one. Nice, nice. And I wasn't ready to talk about her yet, but I, I, I was thinking of whipping her out. But, you know, she's in a box right now. 
like all good barbers. It's just be. way too much information. <laughs> I, you know, so you, you, you maybe you can come back on the show and share your toys. Yeah. So that's, I, that's, I am fully planning on penetration testing my Barbie. So okay. showing. No, you know what? I take that back. Maybe we don't want to <laughs> talk yeah, about that, the toys. That that's Barbie, too. Yeah. That Barbie is only like a couple years old. That's just wrong. Mm. Oh, hello, hello, <laughs> hello, Barbie only came out this year. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so, a, so Adrian, uh, I, I very much was inspired by Tim's um, Kayla, his friend Kayla, after I hacked the Bluetooth portion of that, did that little I, fun if, stuff. If I could pull up the clip, how I envision Tim Medine like doing testing on the Barbie is a scene right out of the movie Weird Science. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With the bra on his head. And, and he, yeah. he, 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 he's got he the bras on appreciate. his head. He's got the things clipped to the Barbie. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. That's how so I he, did so not, he did not appreciate the heckling. When I suggested that he was touching his Barbie inappropriately, yes. <laughs> or Kayla, yes, yeah. yes. So uh, yeah, so right inspired off. by his, uh, uh, I actually was able to obtain a uh, a smart toy, and I'm going to leave the name um, anonymous at this point. Um, but it is in the shape of a monkey, and I've dubbed it, it the spank, I've dubbed it the Spank the Monkey Project. Now I was going to say <laughs> spanking the monkey. There it is. Is it an adult? No, you know what? It is I don't want to. Not know. an adult toy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it will be when I get done. With yeah. <laughs> After you yeah, put the bra when... on your head and hook up some things yes. to it, yeah. Okay. You know, when, when when the toys in the bedroom start becoming IoT, that's when we really have to worry. They already are. They already are. Go see oh. my DefCon presentation. From I was going to say, did you do a presentation on that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. We, um, we so ha we hacked the teledildonics. <laughs> Adrian, you've already answered the five questions with Security Weekly. I have a new set of five questions that I began asking people who've already answered the original five questions. These five questions are heavily influenced by the original five questions. So, are you ready to play five questions version 2.0? Absolutely. What is one thing about you that most people do not know? I have a Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> now no, no, it's out, right? Now it's out. That's the funny part about that question. You can really only come on the show and answer that once. Yep. <laughs> Unless there's multiple. Things. That's right. Wait, no, no, that's a barbecue. What are you talking about? Question two. Choose a song <laughs> that, in your opinion, best represents one of the following. Your life, one you would play to get pumped up, or the best breakup song, in your opinion. Ace of Spades. I've been thinking about it all week. Uh, let, me, let me pass away last week. Ace of Spades would be. So is that the best breakup song? Motorhead. Well, it's it's appropriate for all situations. <laughs> well, actually, okay. it's perfect for yeah, all three. Okay. I got that's a good answer. Okay, fair enough. As most people know, the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby is played in teams of three. Choose two people other than yourself to represent your team in the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby. Well. Huh. John and Larry, man. Yes, that's nice. a very popular oh. answer. That's <laughs> a, win, a winning team right it's there. It's a winning well, team. You know, <laughs> they are Ed, Ed, experienced I, ass grabby grabby players. If I said if I said like, you know, Ed or Dr. Cole, they would not oh. be happy. Oh. 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 <laughs> but but, might, but Dr. Cole might, might be I, I speak on I speak on good good authority that Cole would be okay with it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll take your word for it, John. He may also be the former <laughs> reigning champion, but uh <laughs> Adrian, if you could have dinner with one person other than those you chose to be your parents, who would it be and why? Alive, dead, fiction, or nonfiction? Uh, Lemmy. Okay. Okay. Outside of the career you chose or the career that chose you, if you could choose anything, what would be your fantasy career or job? Oh, well, you know, I have to be like... Porn John star. Strand's executive, executive assistant or something. You know, <laughs> I John, love that. John's my hero. <laughs> hey, that's you know, not good. You know. That oh, position, we might sweet. be able that's to really make that sweet. happen, Adrian. Yeah, but the problem is John has a black leather sofa in his office. <laughs> oh, sticky, yucky. <laughs> not all that's black <laughs> and leather. And well, it wasn't at all. <laughs> hey, Larry, Larry, <laughs> God damn it, man. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. It wasn't always black, okay? <laughs> that makes it... Better, I guess. I don't know. Slipperier. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> this is what happens when you get all these Sands guys together. Just, Good lord. The the love the love is just. There's a lot of love. Well, Adrian, thank you very much for appearing on Security Weekly, uh, helping us out. You came on very much last minute, so 
uh, thank you for preparing all of that. And I'm, I'm really excited about HTB2 and uh, putting the charge out there to the community to, uh, to help start researching it and, uh, and make it better. Break all the things. I'm, I, I, I'm, and now, of course, I'm intrigued whether or not Barbie speaks HTTP2. <clears throat> I don't Maybe think she should. does. <laughs> she probably doesn't, but we can yeah. make her. We can make her. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that face. She has to be wow. made to do things. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. boy. Okay. With that, we're going to take a short break. Come back with the security news for this week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Ciao.